G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and in today's video we're checking out a new track, Goodwood Motor Circuit. G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and as you just saw, this is Goodwood Motor Circuit. So I'm gonna say right now, that was not my intro, that was the, just the Gran Turismo officially released trailer for the game, and then I just added my voice at the start, obviously, they're not gonna say I'm Smokescreen, etc, etc, at the start of their trailer, but yes, I'm not gonna take credit for that, I just wanted to add it, I just thought it was a little cinematic experience for you, but this is Goodwood. So it's a club, sort of, classic car racing motor circuit in the UK. It's not a hardcore racing destination, it's more of a Sunday track day meet sort of destination. Uh, it's a small little track, 3.8 kilometres. It's got uh, what is officially known as Seven Corners, I think it has more than that. But uh, I think it has somewhere near 13 or 14 different corners, you'll see. We'll probably walk you through a lap a bit later. But uh, that's, that's actually really all there is to the track. There's not too much. It's exi what you see is what you get. It's a flat, completely flat circuit. Little to no uh, undulation in the landscape. But uh, really the chicane at the end is sort of the hardest part of the track. But this is a daily race, daily race C. So obviously fuel and tyres, and that there is a qualifying lap, 116.1. Now that's actually... The top 10 times are around 114, 115, so I'm happy with the 116, to be honest. But we're going to see a race around here. So there's the grid. Look how sort of tightly bundled up that grid is. Uh, it's a really tight sort of entry, or like start of the track. It's not really designed for massive races, so Gran Turismo have done a very good job to try and get all the cars in sort of the starting area. So this is a grid start with false start check you can see I've got to keep my foot on the brake and I've got to rev the car uh, and I've got to time it when the red lights go out and that's not always the same amount of time so some racing go off very quickly and then some it can linger for seven or eight seconds so you really got to get it there but we're gonna go try and go around the outside of the uh, Audi there and it just sort of gets a bit awkward as with like our three abreast going into turn one and I end up going off the outside of the track so I'm slow down into 14th. I come out of the ghost at the wrong time. Someone goes into the back of me, and I'm just losing it. And then this guy sort of just keeps his foot in it. Like, he ends up quitting, but he sort of keeps his foot in it as I'm sort of squirming all over the front of him. It's like, if he just came out of the throttle, I could have had a chance to um, gather myself up and let him go past. But, <laughs> like... I'm not really going to take the blame for that one, to be honest. He should have just came out of the throttle, even if it's for half a second. Came out of the throttle, moved over to the right. That's all he had to do. But anyway, as I've been talking, I've got a couple of people sliding off at the top of it. Levant corner, and a couple of people with penalties up ahead. So we are in the Alfa Romeo 4C Group 4. It's a very, very good handling car, but it's main Achilles heel, top speed. It's an absolute snail down a straight. But uh, I figure this is a track that is really suited to cars with handling, uh, cars with good handling. So um, that's where we're going to leave it. But as you see, I get launched by that curb and go wide. And then coming through the chicane, BMW comes in and just slams me into the wall. Uh, Veyron's off. Another BMW with a penalty right next to me, but we're in set uh, 13th out of 17. But that little sort of chain of events at the chicane probably wasn't the yellow BMW's fault, but I just catch the grass going through turn one it again, and we get a little bit of oversteer, but they're going to serve their penalties up ahead. So we're going to go past Veyron, we're going to go past BMW, and we get a nice little punt from the Audi there, uh, chrome Audi actually, nice uh, punt as we go through Ford Water, officially turn two, but I think it's turn four. I'll walk you through a lap and explain my uh, turns a bit later. 
But we go through St. Mary's Corner there, so we're in ninth, so it's not really a good position to be in, but we're going to go through Levant Corner now. Now, this is a really, really lures you in to break late, That's and then there's a massive gravel trap on the outside there, so you get, really get lured in. So, fifth place up ahead has a penalty, so it's... He's quite a fair way up, actually. I might be seventh, sorry. Seventh. As, no, it's sixth. Sixth. Has a penalty up ahead, so. These corners, you sort of, they're all trail breaking corners, really. There's no large breaking zones. The only thing that resembles a breaking zone is um, the chicane, as you've got to get all your breaking done before, because there's not much room to do breaking going through there. Lap three now. Let's see how we're going. So, of course, there's someone off, actually. <laughs> uh, fifth place is off. What's he driving there? He's in a Toyota 86. So he's obviously been sucked off in turn one. He, when you just catch the grass, you saw me in lap one, actually. You just catch the grass and there's no grip. There's no way past. If you see this guy, he just comes past. He just can't avoid the contact and I just absolutely lose it. He just nudges me just enough to sort of put me out of my rhythm and I just lose it. Like that was 100% avoidable contact. Like that is just stupid driving. Like you just gotta be more aware of your surroundings. So I'm down in 11th. So let's see if anything happens through Saint, uh, through Levant Corner. Yep, I go a little bit wide, just catch the grass and you see it just really inhibits my ability to accelerate through there. But let's go down Levant straight now. So we've got a nice, little pocket of uh, time between me and the guy in 10th and me and the guy in 12th. Two seconds, uh, three seconds a piece. So let's go through the final corner, go out wide and bring it back in. And that's really, that's a good way to take it. And someone's actually hit the wall, that Audi has hit the wall, got five seconds of penalty for that. And we managed to get through the chicane nicely. So we're gonna go through a lap of Goodwood now. We're gonna ignore anyone that goes off. I think this Veyron goes off at turn one actually. Uh, so this is turn one there, and then turn two is now that the curb, and then turn three is this other corner marker there. So you want to go in wide and then trail it around the first couple of bits of it, and then accelerate out through the third corner there. So forward water now, halfway up the straight, it's flat. I actually go a bit wide through there for some bloody reason. I managed to miss it, but we managed to get through there okay. Turn five, you want to just trail it around nicely. Of course, you're trailing around a lot of the corners. Turn. Uh, seven now, turn six is sort of a little kink uh, to the right just before St. Mary's Corner. Levant Corner, turn eight is that first monster curb there and then you bring it out and for turn nine which is that part there and you want to keep it to the right hand, uh, left hand side sorry, down Levant Straight. So this is really where people are going to catch me down this straight here because Alfa Romeo doesn't have a good top end. So break just after the start of the grass, turn 10 and 11, which uh, 11 being that monster curb on the exit, and 12 and 13 is the chicane, turn 12, turn 13, just actually get a bit wide through there. So um, that's the other main bad thing about the Alfa Romeo here. It does have a tend to snap in sudden direction changes. So let's see, that line's a little bit better through turns one, two and three. Uh, so th that's what I mean. You go through the trail it around and then get on the accelerator and bring it out to the left hand side on the exit there Anyway back to the race. We're in ninth place at uh, the uh, Veyron that went off in the previous lap around turn two and three He is going to feature quite uh, often in this video So in St. Mary's corner now, let's go through here and this is the dip that I was talking about if you can get on the power too early and when you go through the dip, it can really throw the car wide, and that's uh, what some people consider a good thing about Goodwood. But you can see I just catch the grass, drift it around, it snaps back. That's what I'm talking about. Veyron goes past. So because of the nature of the corners, they're flowing very sort of shallow corners, and you're trail braking. If you don't have enough braking pressure, you're going to carry too much speed, and you're going to catch the outside grass with the rear wheel, and that, that's exactly what can happen. Uh, but if you break too much, you're not. You're just going to go straight ahead. So that's what is bad, or some people consider good about Goodwood. Is there's also no wall. So if you make a mistake, you're going to get punished for it, which is really what motor racing should be. 
Um, of course, most tracks these days, uh, it's just surrounded by walls. So if you sort of make a mistake, you're just going to slide off a wall and not lose too much time. But Goodwood, it, it's just surrounded by grassland and fields. And I think there's an airfield in the centre of it. Have a look at a map of that. So there's that Veyron again. And I'm flashing my headlights. So if he looks behind, let's see he's a bit shaken. So I want to get past him before Levant straight because he's going to streak away from me if he's still in front of me on Levant straight there. Uh, because that Veyron has excellent top end speed, clearly. But this is this is Group 4 for you, an Alfa Romeo 4C racing a Bugatti Veyron. But he ends up going wide through Levant Corner. And we managed to get through there a lot better than him. Back up into ninth place, it's taken a lap to recover that position from where I went off at the exact point he did just before. So race C, you can see I've got the fuel map up. So fuel use and tyre wear are present in this particular race here. So of course you want to be fuel saving a little bit and tyre saving. So tyre saving really is just turn exactly what you need to. So sliding, that's not good. That's going to wear out your rear tyres. And then uh, braking heavily while trying to turn is going to wear out your front tyres. And then sort of swerving is also going to wear out your front tyres too. So you just want to drive nice and smoothly. So that is sort of a better sort of rendition of going through turns, uh, going through turn one, or turn one, two, and three if you're me, and you consider each portion of the curve a single corner. But while I've been talking there, you can see we've ca caught up a bit of ground to the BMW. So he's the one who sort of awkwardly uh, slammed me into the wall going through the chicane. So someone's been off up ahead now. The I think that's a Taiwan flag, Taiwanese flag. He's also in the 4C. So they go through uh, there side by side. And 4C really doesn't give him much room at all. He runs him right, right to the outside of the track. So let's see. Uh, you can see just how much room the BMW is given on the exit there. So the Alfa Romeo doesn't run off the track. But Alfa Romeo has come out victorious and keeps his 7th position. BMW slides wide, so that means we're going to make up his position into 8th place. So this is the final chicane, it's really tight, you've really got to get really friendly with the walls to really maximise it, but I was keeping it quite conservative through there. But that was lap 7, so that was the in-lap, so uh, 15 laps you can do an undercut on lap 7 or an overcut on lap 8 to make it work. And I've gone into for lap 7. Mainly because it's a bit of a... Look how narrow the pit lane is. So if someone else is coming through the pit lane, I'm in the way while I'm refueling. So it's really not a good pit lane at all. But um, there's a bit of a glitch that can happen. If someone's exiting the pit lane or someone else is refueling, there can be a massive glitch and can be stuck in the pit lane. So you don't want to go in when the rest of the pack is. You see, I just catch the grass coming out, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Slide around there, and that's really what wears out your tyres, is sliding and making mistakes like that. So we're going to fast forward here, we're going to fast forward to the pit exit to see what positions we can make up. No one there actually, still in ninth, but you see leader is in lap 9 now. So we're going to slow down here, we've made up the, uh, the gap to Steve Mattini in 8th place. What's he driving? The Veyron. And he just slides wide again. So he's really not having a good time trying to tame that monster Veyron which is obviously heavily neutered to fit into the sort of power band of group 4 but on the exit here you see 86 comes out we make up another position into 8th place and that's really where we finish that race in 8th so of course these race C especially in group 4 you tend to the first half tends to be more exciting than the second half because once everyone pits everyone spreads out and gets into their own rhythm there's not really too many moves in terms of overtaking in the second half of the race. So there we go. From lap 10 to lap 15, we kept it in 8th place. But that is it from that race today, and that's the end of the video. So there I am in 8th place. Uh, where did I start? 5th or something? So it's not, not really a great, great race, to be honest. But that's my introduction to Goodwood, and... That's more of a demonstration of what really can go wrong there if you just catch the grass on some of the corners, on all of the corners really, looking at a map of it now. Yep, if you catch the grass on any corner, you're going straight off, as I demonstrated 
more than enough times in that video. But that's it. Please subscribe if you do like my content and hit like to let me know you enjoyed. But that's the end of the video and that means that's it from me. Once again, thank you very much for watching. See you later.